What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're gonna be looking at Anthony's by Vic base cabinet. That's all. Let's take a closer look at these base cabinets, but specifically Anthony's. All right, guys, you guys know the drill. If you are not following me on Instagram, at Vic underscore VP, what are you waiting for? You would see all the builds that I do on my stories. Uh, pretty heavy on the stories, to be honest. I'll post my personal life, my personal gaming stuff, and all the builds are all on my stories. Yes, I have two accounts, Vic underscore VP and Game Case Arcades. Game Case Arcades is just really for the cabinets. But as far as like personal life and real live up-to-date stuff, the Vic underscore VP is my personal account. That's where I post a lot more. And honestly, the DMs and all that, go to that. I'm also posting a lot on TikTok and such, all the social. So be sure to follow that because you'll see all the progress of all my builds. You would have seen this build. You would see Project Canada. This one's a whole different thing. But on this one today, we're going to be talking about Anthony's by Vic base cabinet. What you see right here is what he ordered. We're gonna go in depth, we're gonna be talking about his specific build, we're gonna talk about artwork. Artwork is a big deal on this because uh, I just like to clarify a couple things when it comes to artwork. Uh, and then we'll also talk about possibilities and such. So keep in mind, I do build these things custom made to order. This is a perfect example of custom made to order. I'm talking dimensions, width, depth. Basically, Anthony hit me up on Facebook Marketplace and he goes, hey Vic, uh, I have these cabinets on Facebook, obviously, so I have like he messaged me on an ad that I have of just actually, it's, it's just black cabinet, just like this with a control panel. He hit me up and goes, hey Vic, listen man, I have a control panel. I have a PC. I have a TV. I have everything but a base cabinet. He currently, and I'll show you a picture real quick, he's currently running, I believe it's either a Viewlinks or I think it's actually, um, I forgot the name of the company right now, uh, the one that is no longer building cabinets. Uh, It'll probably come to my mind. I have to search it now. <laughs> so I wasn't gonna be able to continue the video or keep talking unless I figured out this company, but it is the Rec Rooms Master Extension Arcade Kit. Uh, I'll show you a picture of it right now, the big one that you can basically see the screen. And he does have, I think it's a 10 inch um, LCD marquee. He does also have this big deck. This is known as a slick stick. Slick Stick CO2 control deck. It is a big deck. As you can see in the picture right now, I'm gonna basically just cover my face. It's being held up by two chairs. So he has this extension arcade kit, but I guess this control panel deck is too big to fit on this extension kit. So he does have it being held up with two stools or chairs. This deck is big. This control panel is big. I would have thought it was a two-player deck, but it, uh, a four-player deck, but it's only a two-player deck. Um, so again, he messaged me and he basically sent me the dimensions for the slick stick controller. And he goes, Vic, I have launch box, I have a PC, I have the deck, I have this extension cabinet, as you can see, it's just, it doesn't fit with my deck. What can I do? So I said, hey, you have basically everything minus like a base. That's where this came in. So basically, this cabinet right now is totally customized. Again, I build custom arcades. I can't stress enough. You will send me dimensions. If you have specific walkways and doorways that you have to enter through, you'll send me those dimensions, which Anthony did in this specific build. This one is totally custom compared to my normal size. This is actually a little bit narrower and a little bit uh, skinnier, I guess you could say. So it's skinny and narrow, it is not as deep as my normal cabinets and it's not really as wide. He sent me a couple pictures of his staircases and I told him, listen, whatever, because it's going down in a basement. I said, you gotta measure every doorway that you're gonna walk through and whatever is the minimum is the minimum that it is. So luckily I came up with this, it should fit. It is uh, basically his walkway is uh, 29 inches deep. This right now is 28. So it is a one inch difference. So with him and his buddy bringing it down the stairs. It's not that heavy, especially if you leave it just like this, but it should go down the stairs fairly easy with one inch of sacrificing. Basically, I'm gonna bubble wrap it for him so it doesn't have to scratch anything, but it's on him to bring it down to his basement. But again, I build these custom made to order. 
His specific scenario, he has everything, but as you can see, that extensions rec room masters kit wasn't gonna work out for him and came up with this. So again, this is pretty awesome. I like this because this is what I wanted to do in the world. This is, this is what I wanna do. I wanna either build full decked out systems or build custom, build just cabinets alone. I wanna do anything. You message me, I'll, I wanna do it. That's, that's my mentality in this. Originally when we were talking, I was talking to him about a bare cabinet because we're talking about pricing. I talked to him about a bare cabinet. I'm talking straight black. Nothing, no artwork, no T-molding. I'll do the T-molding cut if you want, but nothing. It's a bare cabinet. It went from bare cabinet request to hey Vic, how much is vinyl and how much is T-molding? I go back and forth on this. It's a big deal. Again, it's very custom. Uh, he right now, and I'll explain like the TV mount and this area here. Um, he right now doesn't know if he's going to put a 32 inch screen on this or a 50 inch. Vinyl is vinyl. And from my, you know, experience compared to like the Kunami cabinet, this has a lot more vinyl than all my other cabinets. You should see what Project Canada is coming up with because this dude is, and right now it's going to be redone, but he's also doing rear artwork on this. So more vinyl means more of a price, obviously. I'll be talking about vinyl and all that in a second, but again, it's just everything's totally custom made to order. So we'll talk about his specific build alone, and then we'll talk about the other features if you wanted to get your own cabinet and all that. But again, it's basics. Some people might look at this and be like, oh, this is pretty easy to make, right? It still takes the same amount of time. I mean, I right now don't have to do any wiring. I don't have to do any control panel. There's no system to it. So fair enough. I mean, figure you're looking at three weeks of just this being made. The big thing on my end when I say that is honestly, when it comes to vinyl, I did the artwork on this and I'm going to talk about artwork in a second, but Doing the artwork and then getting my buddy Justin Gulf Coast decal, shout out to him. I don't get any price breaks or anything. He's just the most affordable person I could have. And his turnaround time is quick. He answers all my messages, like not instantly, but within a day. So without me having my own printer, which I'll never buy, please, people comment me and be like, you should get your own printer. No, the headache on that and the maintenance on that and ink on that, I would rather have a third party deal with vinyl. So. It's an, it takes about a week alone just to design, especially if you give me the range that I designed the cabinet for you. It's just a week alone in design. Then it's another week just for like Justin to print it and ship it out to me. So keep that in mind. As you can see, the cabinet is on casters, it's on four casters. Nice and easy, pretty cool stuff. Basic stuff, again, it went from basic cabinet, nothing on it to, hey Vic, you know what? What is it going to cost if we add the vinyl and the T-molding to it? And there you go. I could always send you the stencil. The stencil is not exactly, you know, the CNC that I use is not 100% perfect. So it might be off by about an eighth of an inch. So if you are looking at very specific like artwork where let's say you wanted a line going around this, it would have to be very specifically set up. So again, artwork is artwork, but again, just kind of looking at the cabinet. I supplied him again, the cabinet, the vinyl. I asked him also if he wants any other add-ons, I guess you could say, such as, hey, do you need speaker holes made? Do you need a TV mount? Do you need like the power strip? Do you want like PC fan holes in the cabinet? He told me, yes, Vic, you know what? Throw in the power strip, which I have here. And just for kicks, as I was doing it on this cabinet, I had the circle saw out. I did put in the two PC fans at the bottom. There is a rear panel here, I have it over there. I just wanna bring you in closer real quick to see the actual inside of the cabinet. So as you can see, we have two holes at the bottom. He could put either you know sound there or ventilation. He might be putting the PC down there. Again, rear cabinet, you do have your power uh, input right here. So this is your standard 10 foot kind of like PC power cable that goes here and out. I do give him the TV mount stuff because he has to mount his TV. He didn't give me the TV, he's gonna mount the TV. But the inside is the inside. I'm basically doing some cleanup right now. Basically taking out all the dust. As you can see, like up top here, you know, I do like to give it to him before it. I will kind of clean it. Just doing it for a video right now, but this will be clean. And as you can see on the inside, it's pretty bare. There's a lot of room on the inside. You can put your computer inside. If you do sound like I do, like Logitech, you could have, it's open. It's a big open space. 
So now just to show you the rear panel, the rear panel is like a real arcade cabinet. It's more of like a panel. It's not a swinging door like Game Room Solutions. Basically four screws in, you give it a little pull. The T molding on this is so fresh, you kind of have to break it in on the rear, but nothing major, just pops out just like that. Honestly, that's the basics of it. Some people look at this video like, okay, big, that's it. Yes, that's it. This is all the customer wanted and that was it. Keep in mind, I do use laminated birch for all my cabinets. Basically, I buy the sheets. Usually a cabinet like this could take three sheets. It's usually three sheet minimum. Again, like I said in my last video, this cabinet specifically is all black. It's black laminated birch, but some panels, mostly on the inside, as you can see this panel here where the control panel is going to sit, is white. It's not a big deal, it's just a color, but in all honesty, his control panel will cover this. Main thing, honestly, I do always aim for is like the rears to be the same color, only unlike Rambo like I did, where it's kind of two-toned, that I don't really want to do that. I do like to keep it black on black. So as you can see, it is clean. There is, as you can see on the side, the black. So imagine if I had white, it would have been white on the side and then black. Again, though, I have to say this specifically, it depends on what my supplier gets. He was out for about three months of no black. He had no black laminated birch. Luckily for a Project Canada, I was able to, ha I had black available. But again, it all depends on what it is, either black or white. And again, it's basics, it's, it's basics. Again, if I don't have enough laminated birch from the three sheets that I cut, the door panel itself will be uh, millimeter, uh, which is fine. It is a little bit heavier, but again, it's only the door panel. So no need to worry about that. The big deal again, no matter what from, I had somebody message me was like, Hey Vic, I'm looking for a cabinet. I just want it bare. If I get it bare though, will you see chips? And in my experience, no matter what, even if I had the $15,000 pro grade CNC, no matter what, you are going to see chips. That is why we put artwork over it. So it hides the chips. For example, like on the millimeter, you can kind of see it. This is millimeter though. You can see on the edges, right where like the saw hits, you're gonna get a chip. As you can see here, you're gonna get a chip. Again, this is the rear door panel. The rear is the rear. If you don't want chips, you gotta provide them. So here's an example of the rear panel. As you can see right on the bottom here, you will see chips. Again, also this might be due really because of the door panel being pulled. So you do pull a little bit, it is tight as you can see. That's just a given, it will be there. But even if it wasn't part of the door panel, on the corners, depending on how like the lumber guys handle the wood, you might see a dent or two. That's why you put vinyl. I personally do like the putty and then I vinyl over it. So again, basic stuff, right? I did also include the TV mount. From my experience, I even messaged the customer because the TV that he sent me a picture of, it looked like an older TV. I'm talking maybe like six to seven years old, older. So it was a little bit thicker than my normal TVs that I use. Uh, I just gave my heads up. I said, listen, I'm pretty sure it'll be supported, but if you're looking to put like a 1999 flat screen plasma, uh, I don't know what the outcome will be. Those things are pretty heavy and all that. I'm just saying that because as again, as you can see the design, the, a lot of the weight of the TV is in the center. So nothing should really happen as far as tilting wise, but big deal that I'm trying to make is that I actually asked the customer to send me the measurement from the bottom of his TV verse mount to the bottom of his screen. That way I could determine where to put the TV mount. Most people are like, Vic, I'm going to put the TV mount in the middle. That's it. Yeah, I like to be very precise and specific. Right now, the way this is, on his TV, he's going to put the bracket on the lowest point. The lowest point of his TV. His TV, the edge of it is going to sit right here. Right, right where this, this curve is. Basically, then he has the option to go upwards uh, if he thinks it's too low. Again, I'm very specific. I think of everything. It might be too much to think of, but yes. Um, I could have also done it where I didn't, I didn't attach the TV mount, but when it comes to like vinyl on it, I like to put, I like to drill on it. Same thing I do also have, you don't see it on the counter, but I do have two holes here, one and two, for your TV power and the HDMI input. Again, I think of everything, right? I know. Uh, I just have that pre-done because if I put the vinyl and then I drill holes, you mess up the vinyl badly. So I like to just kind of do everything for the customer. Let's talk about like add-ons now for like the cabinets and such. So for example, in this specific scenario, I asked the customer, I said, Hey, do you want to send me like, do you want to drop off the control panel 
all bolted and I'll also put like LED underglow. Even on the cabinet, he didn't want LED underglow on this. So again, you're looking at a base cabinet with artwork, uh, artwork, the T molding, we got the TV mount, the power strip, and I did also do the um, fan holes in the rear. I also asked him, are you gonna put speakers? He goes, no, Vic, I'm gonna use the TV speakers. You could also let me know if you wanna do an actual speaker grill pattern, like my personal cabinet. Right here, right now, I do have the speaker holes drilled, but I didn't puncture the vinyl because I don't know if he wants it. Uh, I thought about the, the speaker holes after the fact, and honestly, it's about a 15 minute thing to do the speaker holes, not a big deal. But again, totally custom. You let me know what you want, and I will get it done. So now, real quick, side by side, I have Project Canada. This one, stay tuned for this one because like I said in past videos, he's going all out on this one. But side by side, we have Anthony's build and Project Canon. I want to talk about add-ons. So again, like I said in my videos, this right here is considered my marquee. This right here is considered my speaker panel. Again, like I said, I do have the speaker holes drilled here. I just didn't puncture through the vinyl. As you can see, we do have Darth Vader's face here. It's technically like in the middle of his mask, more towards the left side. I don't want to do that. When the customer comes to pick this up, then I'll puncture it through. He is picking it up. I think he told me it's about a five hour drive, um, but his daughter isn't, I don't know, but he's going to pick it up in his pickup truck. So customer, again, like I said, I don't want to puncture the speakers until he comes in. I'll do that. As you can see though with Project Canada, this is different. Big thing right now, we got two, I don't even know the size of these things. I, uh, I got to find the box. I think they're like eight inch. These are like PC monitor speakers. Like, I think they're actually for like music. Like, this is like producer grade speakers. Again, he didn't want his Logitech stuff, so we have a very unique stuff. Right now, it looks kind of weird because there's no vinyl on it. But wait until you see the vinyl on it. So, again, even you can see here, I have black laminated birch, but I also have white here. Again, here, vinyl is going on this, so I don't have to worry about the color. It's more about the rear I had to worry about. Um, again, on this one, he does have these music producer grade speakers. He even has an amp that's going to drop into here. The big thing that people are looking at is this gaping hole. Yes, he does have a, I'm looking at the side. It is a 25 inch active marquee going on in this. So, hey Vic, can you do active marquee? Yes. Yes, here it is. Uh, he, Project Canada, will supply the TV, meaning he has it in his house. Same thing, I asked him, hey, where is the bottom of the vase amount? What's the distance between that hole and the bottom of your TV? You could see it right here. The mounts are different heights because of the specific TV being used. Basically, he could go up from here. You can tell he go down, but again, I'm going to be putting vinyl also on this. Same thing, we have the power and the HDMI input. On this specific build, it's gonna be a PC build, so I do have the PC power button here because he's putting vinyl on the rear panel. Also, you can see right here, he did have a USB, uh, you know, the two port USB extender in the front of the cabinet. Again, basic add-ons. If you need USB extenders, you want LED lighting, which Project Canada does have, I do have it linked up and everything, you, I could do that. You just gotta let me know, it's all add-ons. You get your base, and then it adds on from there. So I do want to make a quick note about Anthony's because like I said in the beginning of the video, Anthony does have an active marquee. The only sad thing with that active marquee is that I would have actually physically needed that marquee in my hands. He doesn't even know if there is a mount to it. So if you look carefully, like at the picture, if you rewind back, it's being held up by like two two by fours. Uh, so I couldn't get any details as far as how it was mounted the measurements on it, that's something in that case, I would actually physically need that monitor to make an active marquee. Project Canada, I have his monitor here. Something where I cut it with the CNC and obviously it was off, not to mention there's like an indent cut, three quarter inch wood, but then to make the TV sit flush, I gotta cut the inside. So I basically made a three quarter inch piece of wood down to like, I think it's almost like an eighth of an inch. It's that precise. It's that much of a headache also. I don't want to say it's easy. It was a lot of trial and error to get to where I am here. Basically, what I'm trying to get at is if I, if I had the actual screen, 
I would have done it here. The only kind of difficult thing with that is the size of it. I mean, if I think it's like a 10 inch that he had, it would have been very, not, I wanna say the word small to make it sound bad. It's just, it would have been like, I needed, I needed it physically or else it wouldn't be centered. And then if he bought it home, imagine this, I cut it, I cut, you know, he sends me the length and the, and the height. I cut it, he gets it home and it's like, hey Vic, it's off by like an eighth of an inch. And then he tries to, to, to cut it and then he messes up the whole thing. Just send me the stuff. That's, that's what I'm trying to get at. Send me the stuff this way I could cut it. If I mess up the cut, I could then cut a new one. I have all the hardware. Not to mention again, vinyl's already on this. So imagine if I did the vinyl, I did it. He took it home, it needed to be cut. You're gonna cut the vinyl. A lot goes into it, please. It's, my mind goes crazy with that. <laughs> now also, if you look very carefully, you might see it from there, you might not if you have a good eye on it. But again, this is Anthony's cabinet. These actually really are two totally separate CNC files. I don't know if you could see it here, but just the angle on this to support, it's mostly like to get it to fit. This angle is different. Not to mention this panel is a different size than this panel. Again, there's so much to it. Even look at the speaker panel. You could see like this one right here is about, I would say a quarter of an inch out more than this. So again, I'm basically trying to get it is that it's custom. I do everything custom. <laughs> Take a look real quick at the rear. Again, rear is rear. Project Canada though, he did tell me that his cabinet is gonna be in the middle of the room. It's not going against the wall like our regular cabinets, like most people do. Project Canada has it in the middle of the room. I've never done this before. He did wanna add vinyl to it. As you can see real quick, I'm just gonna talk about you know this because people don't really see it. As you can see how these cabinets are, I build, you can see that it's the, the rear panel is indented. There's about three quarters of a lip here. I do that on purpose. There's three quarters of a lip here. When I do vinyl for the sides, it's, what's the word I want to, I don't want to use easy because we're like, oh, it's easy. No, it's more like the vinyl just sits, I press and then I cut. This one here, when I did the piece, I did it exact, I did it exactly to the dimensions on the inside. And of course, it's not exact the entire cabinet. It's like right here was like an eighth of an inch bigger than this. Basically, I started to pull. I was pulling the vinyl. I don't know if you can see it from there, but basically the wording started to warp. I junked it. it was, I did it from top to bottom and I junked it because I didn't like it. It didn't meet my standards. If it doesn't meet my standards, it does not go out. I took a personal hit on it. I mean. Gulf Coast is gonna let me know the price of just this one piece, but I know, I know we're in at least 100 to 150 bucks in this piece of vinyl alone. So yes, I did a 100 to 150 dollar life lesson. I don't want to call it a mistake. I did a life lesson. Uh, only thing, only thing I wanted to show before the video, but this right here, this cabinet has actually three. One, two, three. This is gonna be. I'm pulling this. This is gonna be garbage. There's actually three PC fans here. I put the fans in it. So again, custom, you let me know if you want me to put PC fans, if you want me to actually supply the fans. Again, Project Canada is getting a total Bivik four player cabinet. Whereas Anthony has everything, but I, I basically did the holes for him. I, I wanted to just honestly test cut it and I did it for him, so I didn't charge him for that. But yes, it's custom, everything's custom. So one last thing and then we're gonna talk about artwork and such. But when we were designing it, basically the first mention that Anthony told me, he told me the dimensions of his control panel. And he was under the impression that the cabinet would have been built around the control panel, meaning, hey, my control panel is about 45 inches wide. The cabinet will be 45 inches wide. I said, number one, that won't fit through your doors. So no, it's not gonna be that wide. Um, number two, I told him just like my by Vic series and my personal cabinet, the control panel will have an overhang. You don't need all 45 inches to control, to support the control panel. A good like 70% to 75% will be supported, the rest overhang. So we were going back and forth a little bit because he didn't really totally understand it, but basically what I'm trying to get at is that number one, it was going to be too wide. So I couldn't do that. Uh, but what's pretty cool where I'm getting at is that I could right now, I'm going to actually do it right now for you. This right now in my hand, this right now in my hands is the K2 
Canada control panel. And what I can basically do is put any control panel. Let's do this real quick. So, Anthony's control panel on the top panel, it's the biggest piece, is 45 inches long. By Canada's is 47 inches long. So my panel already is long. And as you can see, it's supported. It ain't going nowhere. You don't have to worry about anything. He will still bolt the door. I'm gonna give him six screws. He drills it right down from the base, right down. He's gonna open up his panel, drill down, and ain't gonna go nowhere. His again, 45 inches long, 18 inches deep. I'm 15. So his will be a little bit out. That's his top panel. His base panel is 14 and 5 eighths. So same thing. The base panel here is, is the same. His big thing though is that his rear back, the rear panel is four and a half inches tall. Project Canada's is four and a half inches tall. This is it. This is what his control panel is gonna look like on it. Mine granted is a little bit more wider, but you get the idea. That's what it's, that's what his is gonna look like. Again, he has the control panel, I don't have it. He sent me the base dimensions, and as you can see again, like I said, you're gonna have an overhang. So just keep that in mind again. If you want me to widen the cabinet, I could do that. But I'm very sure 99% of us don't have doorways that will support that. <laughs> but yes, there you go, you can, that's it. Literally, virtually any control panel, you can pop it on and easy pop off. Done. Now real quick, the last little bit we'll talk about is artwork. Again, Anthony, awesome dude. What I'm gonna say right now, please, I'm not making fun of you. It's just more about I say these things so that other people understand communication, like how I work and how detailed I am. And if you didn't know, now you know. So basically, I started making the cabinet. Then, you know, about two days afterwards, he goes, hey Vic, I have an idea for the vinyl. I just saw the movie. Uh, he's a big Star Wars fan. He saw like a specific movie from Star Wars. I don't know which one. And he goes, I want a Darth Vader cabinet. I said, cool, bro. Do me a favor, pull images from Google. It's gotta be big images, large images. You can literally do a Google search. In the images tab, and you go on the top right, there's a tools, and then search by large image, like large format. I personally look up like 4K backgrounds. I look up like, I have a couple of keywords that I look up and a couple of sites I look up. So, he had a very specific request as far as a certain image that he wanted of Darth Vader, and I'm pretty sure you could see it here. Sometimes the image that you want is not available online. So, I was explaining to Anthony, I said, listen, you could send me a picture. If you find the picture, you can send it to me. Just gotta make sure it's very high resolution. It's gotta be big. So. Again, awesome dude, it's fine. He goes, hey Vic, I actually have the movies on like Blu-ray. Uh, I, could, I could get them, uh, I could get the images from the movie, from the Blu-ray disc. I said, oh, that's awesome, great. We're gonna start first with the sock. I told him, awesome dude, great. He wanted this one with Darth Vader and the sparks. I'm, I'm hiding the sparks behind another image of Darth Vader, but he wanted this image of Darth Vader by the sparks, so he goes, hey Vic, I got the image. He sends me a picture on Facebook Messenger, like a picture, which you don't wanna do, because it's not high res. And it turned out that he took a picture with his phone of his TV screen running the Blu-ray movie. And he goes, hey Vic, here it is, it's in Blu-ray 4K, and again, it's, it's fine. Uh, I just told him, I said, dude, it's, that's, not, that's not high res. He goes, no, Vic, it is. It's a Blu-ray image. I said, I understand that the TV screen you're watching is 4K, but I need the, the image itself, I need it to be 4K. Um, I was basically explaining to him that I, I couldn't really take your, your phone. Like, you, you sent me a picture from your phone. That's like me looking at, you know, hey, this is a 4K image of, of my cabinet. It doesn't work that way, unfortunately. So, I told him, I said, you know what, bro? Like, he understood, like, he's like, Vic, I gotta have it. I said to him, listen, I'll try to make it work. If it comes out pixelated, though, I, I can't do anything about it. So he's like, Vic, do what you can. I trust you, you're the guy, trust me. So, there is actually an image of this on uh, Google, um, but he wanted this specifically with, like, his arm up. And from afar, it looks good. Up close, it still looks good. You do see it a little bit grainy. Not awful, it is A-OK. -okay. I wasn't gonna print it if it didn't look good on like my Photoshop file. So 
again, it's just somewhere I thought it was, I, I don't want to say we're funny, but I thought it was funny that, you know, he thought of taking a picture of a 4K screen, but it's okay. It's, it's okay. I'm here to educate you. It's okay. But basically I have one image, one big image of that with Darth Vader and the sparks. He then had another one of like just a mask. I did that. I lowered the opacity so it blends in. I changed the filter on it. And this image here I took from a Google wallpaper. So pretty cool. You got best of both worlds. The other side, when I was originally making the artwork for him, this is what I first came up with. This right here is all 4K images from a wallpaper. Darth Vader, as you can see, clean, not grainy at all. Then I did add this like on the world. Awesome, it looks good. So basically that side is his like phone pictures. This side is like a Google image 4K background stuff. Awesome stuff. One big thing that he needed, it was a must. He needed this half broken Darth Vader mask. And unfortunately you couldn't, I can't find this image online. You cannot find this image online. This right here is a, it's actually his phone, his picture that he sent me. And it looks okay, it looks good. I'll be honest, it looks good from where you are and you're about maybe three feet from the cabinet. So it looks okay. Just keep in mind that when you look up close, it might be a little grainy, but it's not awful. It's really not that bad. So he did want, yes, one blown up picture. He wanted this, he designed the cabinet. He designed the artwork. Again, like I said, we went back and forth maybe a good eight times on vinyl. The first one here, I did a whole like Darth Vader in the middle and like the whole Star Wars crew. And he goes, no Vic, I just want broken mask Vader. I sent him a picture of just this and he goes, yes, perfect. Cool, awesome. As far as this panel here, right? I did mention him, I said, listen, this is the marquee. Do you want to put like your name? Do you want me to put like, you know, Anthony's Arcade, he goes, no Vic, I just want, I want Darth Vader, that's it, I want Vader. So I said, okay, cool. Just keep in mind again, speaker panel and up. This panel here usually is two separate images. He just wanted Darth Vader. So as you can see, you see Vader's face here, but then his body is here, where the speaker would be. The last thing was this. I don't know the wording, I'm not, I'm not a Star Wars fan, but this like lava field, his home, I don't know. Um, he wanted this. I said, that's A-OK, -okay. this image actually is from his phone. He did take this picture and as you can kind of see it, you might actually see it there, you can see the grain. Because honestly, it's stretched. The image is stretched here. But I did mention to him, I said, listen, I'm gonna put an image here because I don't know what screen you're putting on this. If he's gonna put a 32 inch or a 50 inch, that is a very big difference. Normally, I usually end the vinyl here because the screen will cover it, just like I did the comic book one, I'm gonna do it for Project Canada, same thing, it's just gonna end here. And if you do need me, in this case, I did it, it will obviously cost more because it is more vinyl. You're talking about a good two and a half feet of vinyl. Um, I decided I'm gonna throw it in for him, I'm gonna do the vinyl entirely on the rear. Only because if he puts a 32 inch, maybe it's gonna end here. And now what? Like now you're gonna have like a black cabinet? I didn't want to do that. That's just how I think. I'm I'm generous. So I did mention to him that yes, this image might it's gonna be cut. Honestly, it's gonna be cut off, but just to be safe, I did put the vinyl on it. Uh, and honestly, there you guys have it. This is it. It's on casters, it moves, it wheels around. Awesome stuff. There you go. That is Anthony's by Vic base cabinet. My camera's overheating. Uh, so we're gonna end it there, but there you go.